Hello everyone and welcome back to round 3 of the Tata Steel 2021 uh, with the last game we'll be showing the leader of the tournament Nils Axel Grandelius uh, versus Pentala Hari Krishna. It's quite the game and it features everyone's favorite opening so let's see uh, how the game went. Uh, Nils opens with e4 and Hari Krishna goes for e6, uh, the French defense. Uh, we have d4, d5 and now e5. Uh, Grandelius goes for the advanced variation of the French. We have c5 striking in the center and now c3 and here queen to b6 uh, 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 putting more pressure on that central uh, central d4 pawn we have knight to f3 developing and defending and now bishop to d7 the bishop is now coming to b5 and the black wants to already trade white's uh, very strong light square bishop in, in a lot of lines this bishop uh, uh, poses a lot of problems for black so here bishop to e2 and now uh, a trade in the center c capture c captures and bishop to b5 now uh, trades uh, trades off this light square bishop and it's not a very uh, i mean it, it has been played before but it's not a line that i've seen uh, anywhere i think and i, I really like it for black so uh, it might give you some ideas if you're also a french player uh, we have castles uh, and now black just exchanges this light square bishop captures captures and now knight to c6 continues developing and uh, it's um uh, it seems like a very nice idea as black kind of sets the the tone of the battle here so knight to c3 white continues developing uh, and here it seems like white is offering the d4 pawn but this pawn is not to be captured it's uh well it, it's extremely poisoned uh, because if captures captures and captures then black is already lost just queen b5 check and not much you can do here you're gonna capture the spawn threaten the rook after you do this you can play whatever bishop to e3 rook to d1 uh, and there's just uh well n nothing good uh for for the black queen for example if you capture on e5 just knight captures on d5 and black's entire position falls apart of course if you capture you even lose the queen and it, it's just game over so of course this pawn uh, is not free for grabs we have knight g to e7 and now queen to d3 improving the the activity of this white queen also adds now a second defender to the d4 pawn interestingly last time this position has been reached it was some 21 years ago uh, and here rook to c8 which is a new move so uh, it is uh, pentala Hare krishna who first brings us a, a new position on the board so already as of move 11 uh, a completely new game uh, we have rook to d1 developing and adding another defender to the d pawn and now h6 take away uh, taking away the g5 square from the uh from the white knight also at some point black will castle and you want to have some breeding room for the king uh bishop to d2 and now knight to g6 uh we have h4 by white white of course wants to push uh, h5 all the way and then push the black knight uh, back to, to where it came from we have bishop to, uh, to b4 uh, by Hare krishna and now knight to a4 with an attack on the queen offering a trade of dark square bishops and here we have queen back to c7 and even h5 so pushing that knight back with knight back to e7 and now bishop to f4 and this is the first interesting move of the game uh here you can just continue developing rook a to c1 which uh, uh, definitely makes sense but for some reason Grandelius wanted to keep the dark square bishops on the board and uh, well, well we'll just see what happens with this we have queen to a5 now attacking the knight here b3 defending and now b5 kicking, kicking the knight back knight to b2 and now even bishop to a3 forcing white to decide how the knight will be defended uh, the knight has no uh, squares uh, where it can go to so the knight you, you have to defend the knight so queen e2 again guarding the knight and now the queen again leaves this uh excellent d3 square goes back to e2 to where she came from we have castles by uh hari krishna and now rook a to b1 defending the knight uh, but also now you free the square so you, you can bring the knight into the game this way rook to c7 black has some ideas of maybe doubling up here uh, on the c file and now knight to d3 uh we have queen back to b6 uh, making room for that pawn to be pushed uh, and now b4 and here with this b4 uh, you're threatening rook to b3 so d4 pawn is again not free for grabs if you go after it captures captures and captures uh, you're just losing the bishop here first you can harass the queen let's say bishop to e3 and after the queen moves queen e4 f3 even queen to h4 and now rook b3 you just pick up the bishop there's nothing black can do to stop this so after b4 we have a5 now ready to meet rook 
b3 would just uh, capture us. The b4 pawn is attacked twice. So captures, captures, and now again we have this very, very uh, well crucial moment uh, where white needs to decide what to do here. It's it's a very uh, tricky position to play. And one thing white might consider is this g4 idea, taking away the f, uh, f5 square from uh, black's knight. But here, white played bishop to c1. And it's a really, really weird maneuver. First, the bishop was on d2, offering a trade here. Then uh, Gr uh, Grandelis decided not to trade it. Then he brought it back to f4 uh, and then back to c1. And now, uh, okay, uh, we have bishop captures on c1. Rook captures, we have, uh, sorry, uh, Rook D captures on C1, Rook captures on C1, and now Knight captures on C1, uh, hoping to get that Knight uh, to, to some active square, uh, but now Knight to C4, and you can see how uh, Black is the one who's, uh, again, dictating the tone of the battle as uh, white doesn't really have all that all that many active plans. And black wants to bring the rook to a8, black wants to bring the rook to a3, put more pressure on white, and white uh, seems just have to wait and see what black will do. So here, knight to b3, and rook to a8 as planned. We have rook to c1, uh, and now knight to c6, uh, bringing another knight into the game. The knight is now coming to b4, and with the two knights on the fourth rank, all of these squares will be covered. So g3, making room uh, on g2 for the king, and now rook to a3. And now you're preparing queen to a7 to put more pressure on the a2 pawn. King to g2, and now queen to a7. Uh, we have rook to c2, defending the a2 pawn twice, but now knight to b4. And all of a sudden, uh, white is uh, white is dead lost. Uh, you're going to lose the a2 pawn. Black's going to be left with a passed b pawn. And it seems like this game uh, was just, uh, you know, straight out of a, uh, victory for black uh, out of nowhere, which is something that often, uh, often happens when you play against the French. So rook to c3. Uh, defending, but now just knight captures on a2. We have rook to d3, and here uh, Hare Krishna goes for the absolute quickest way to end the game. Uh, he just plays rook captures on b3. Gives up the exchange, only temporary, uh, because after captures he has a nice fork here, knight to c1, forking the queen and the rook, uh, queen to c2, and now just captures. We have captures and queen to a4. Uh, of course, the queen trade cannot, uh, cannot happen, because then uh, you just push the a pawn to victory. So, uh, of course, the Grandelius had to move the queen, queen to b1, but now just b4, and it was in this position that uh, Niels Grandelius resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. A wonderful victory for Pentala Hare Krishna, uh, who is now on 2 out of 3 uh, in only 38 moves. So here you resign, uh, because Black's plan is very simple. You want to push the pawn to b2 and play queen a1. There is nothing white can do to stop this. If you try something like knight to e1 to bring it into the game, b3, knight to d3, and now queen to a2. Uh, just uh, give me a second. Queen to a2, uh, and now, uh, of course, white cannot trade, white has to move, queen to d1, uh, and now it's all over. For example, knight e3 check, uh, forks the king and the queen, and even if you don't run into this fork, whatever you play, queen c1, it's just a matter of time. b2, the queen has to move, and then you get another queen into the game, or you just have to give up material here, captures, captures, uh, sorry, uh, wrong capture, captures, captures, and captures, and then uh, it's just a, a completely winning endgame for black, black now has a knight, white doesn't, and of course completely winning. So really interesting stuff, and uh, we always enjoy seeing uh, the French defense played on the highest level, because you never know what will happen here, uh, Yanni Pomnish used it with success in, in the candidates tournament uh, last year, uh, and uh, well, it is just a, a fine opening if you know your way around it. And for those of you who are new to chess, uh, you might not have seen uh, Bobby Fischer's game against Kovacevic, where Kovacevic employed the French defense against Bobby Fischer himself. So I will put a link to that uh, in the description below. It will be the first thing you see, so if you want to check that out as well. Uh, but yeah, a uh, uh, very nice victory for Hare Krishna, and we said that we were going to show the standings now uh, after the the three rounds have passed. So these are the standings. Uh, with two points, we have uh, Pentala Hare Krishna, Magnus Carlsen, Anish Giri, Fabiano Corwana, and Niels Grandelius. With one and a half points, uh, Jordan Van Forest, uh, Maxim Vasheola Grav, Andrei Esipenko, Alireza Firuja, and Radoslav Wojtaszek. With one point, Jan Krzysztof Duda, Arian Tari, and David Anton Giharo. And with half a point out of three, Alexander Donchenko. So we'll see what happens still very early on in the game, uh, so in the tournament, so anything can still happen. 
Uh, sir, uh, I would like to thank uh, DV Dynamo, uh, Siaran Farah, uh, Louis Matheson, uh, Omar Dasa, and uh, Ryan Urban for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of the Tata Steel, checking up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and uh, have an excellent rest of your day.